card making friends welcome back it's sandy mciver here and today i'm going to play with how to add some ink blending and some texture to your handmade cards super super easy cards but boy do they got a wow factor to them and i'm just showing you the two and now let's see what we're going to be playing with today i am playing with one of the new dies from simon says stamps this is called the half spring floral mandela and you don't have to use this one. You probably have a Mandela in your stash. You can use a whole circle if you want and cut it in half. For the butterflies, I'm using the Layered Cosmic Butterfly. This is a die that came out a few months ago from Simon Says Stamps and I haven't used it yet. We're playing with some positively saturated inks in Heather, Violet, Iris, and Sweets. I'm using some blending brushes and I have my Waffle Flower Grip Mat. I'm going to make this card today with the three butterflies, but you'll notice that all the elements also go into the second card. And you're just going to double up on the background and do a single butterfly. So let's dig in. First off, I'm showing you these cool new lidded trays from Spellbinders. They're awesome for carrying your die cuts around. Okay, on to the butterflies. I pre-cut everything and I had to do it six times because I need three of the white wings for each of the butterflies and then I need the little black pieces and the body. So you are going to have a double set by the time we're finished. You see the black goes around the edge of the butterfly and then the body obviously down the center. I'm placing them on top of my grip mat and I'm going to do one full butterfly for you. I'm using these small uh, blending brushes from Simon Says Stamps for the first part of this. I find it was a lot easier to get into the smaller spots uh, with these small brushes. And I'm starting with the lightest color of the purple and I'm going to lay down my first layer and uh, obviously I've sped this up a tiny little bit and then for the next two colors I go back and forth between the medium and the dark because I don't want my butterfly to be really 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 dark and this is these are definitely a blue purple so in the end I'm going to be bringing in some pink that's where the sweet ink pad comes in and we're going to warm it up a little bit with some pink Okay, so I'm just showing you that I'm getting close to being finished with my first layer, and this is the latest color, um, Heather. Okay, next we're going to change blending brushes because I have one for the darker purples. And again, as I said, I'm going to go back and forth in between the medium and the dark purple, that's the violet and the iris just to deepen the edges of the butterfly. And you'll notice I'm keeping the centers pretty white at this point. That's where the pink is going to go. And uh, you'll notice on the card I did with a single butterfly, I actually left some of the white showing. The card that we're building today, I'm going to completely fill in the center with the pink. So when we get to the very end and we show you the cards again, you'll see the difference between the two um, blending techniques. Okay, so I've moved on to the sweets color and a pink blending brush and I'm adding my pink and I'm going over top of the purple as well and that warms up that bluey purple, turns it to more of a reddy purple and makes really, really pretty butterfly wings. Beautiful. Okay, I did the other two off camera and I just wanted to show you how they turned out. I'm going to set those aside and we're going to do the same ink blending technique with the mandala, okay? And so you can try this way. I'm on my glass mat and I am doing that, but you know what? You can bend the heck out of your mandala because it's not stuck to anything. So move those pretty little butterflies off of your sticky mat or your grip mat, add your mandala, and it will make life a lot easier. Even still, my sticky mat has been used so much it's not very sticky anymore. So you'll notice that I use my fingers on my left hand to really hold everything in place so that I'm not um, bending any of these pieces while I'm ink blending. And I'm also not blending really heavily. I'm going quite lightly so that I don't. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you blend in both directions. Like the circular motion goes, see, I just changed it to the other way. That way you will cover all the white sides of all the cutout pieces while you're doing this. So basically I go along and I do the first layer is all in the light purple, which is the heather. 
and I'm going for coverage at this point, basically getting a little bit of purple ink all over, making sure that the edges and all the side cut pieces have some purple on them so they don't show white when we go to put this on our black card front. Okay, so now that I've got that all nailed down, I'm going to the middle of the purples. This is the violet, and I am adding blotches of purple throughout the mandala. And then the other spots that I'm leaving exposed, I'm coming in with the pink sweets and I'm adding some pink to that, which just turns it into a ready purple, which is really quite pretty and is a really nice contrast on the black background. You'll see it when we start to put the card together. And of course, as I said, you don't need to buy all the new tools. You probably have some of this stuff in your stash. Maybe your butterfly doesn't look exactly like mine, but you know what? Close enough is good. Okay, so you just want to go back and forth, add some more darkness every few spots. Now I'm into the very, very dark purple, just adding a little bit of highlight here and there. I'm trying not to go over my pink part too much because I don't want to darken that. But it just, it adds interest to the background of your card. And you could also do this in rainbow colors. It would be really pretty. I just happen to be stuck on purple <laughs> for today anyway. Actually, I've been stuck on purple for about a week now. Okay, so just finishing up a little touch up and there's my finished mandala. Before we clean up all the ink blending, you want to grab a sentiment and I am using the Sentiment Strips Send Happiness. They're white from Simon Says Stamps and I'm using the blending brushes that we just used. There's lots of ink on them and I'm inking up this white sentiment because I want it the same color uh, as the highlights in my card. I think the white would stand out too much and the black won't stand out at all. So there's a happy medium in here. Blend it so that it matches. Okay, gluing these together is a little bit tedious, so I did it off camera. I'm using my Barely Art Glue with a really fine tip on the end of it and these tweezers. And I glued the black pieces around the edges and then the body. To add even more texture, we are going to emboss the card front with a neatly knitted embossing folder. What you do is squirt both sides of your black cardstock with water, place it inside the embossing folder, run it through your Big Shot or whatever tool you use, and you will get this beautiful detailed impression in your paper. The water helps to allow the paper to break down and stretch without it cracking and peeling. Okay, now I'm working on a lumpy service, so I am using some of the terrific tape from Simon Says Stamps. This stuff is much stronger than just a tape runner, and it really helps you adhere these lumpy surfaces to your card bases and gives you a nice professional looking finish. Okay, so do two sides at a time because if you overlap with the uh, protective cover on, it's really hard to get it off. <laughs> and then my trick for a nice square landing for this thing is I use my score buddy. I'm putting my top folding A2 sized white card base up into the corner, wedging it right in in the top left hand corner. I do the same thing with my card front, okay, and then lay it down. Ta-da! Okay, because that card front is embossed, it's now a little bit smaller than your white card base. So take a nice sharp pair of scissors and you're going to run just along the edge of your black and snip off all of the white. And I like to do one layer at a time. I figure that it's a little bit easier to get a precision cut because you're not cutting through two pieces of cardstock, just one. So I do the top layer first and then I close the card and if required, then I do the second layer. And that way you get a really nice finished edge. So you may notice sometimes when you're doing this black on white that the fold at the top of your card shows white. My little trick for that is I take a black marker and I use the edge of it and I just run it along that crease and make it black. Again, nice finished look. And I'm going to stick it right down in between and get all the little edges. Because this is such a deep embossing folder, some of the white was still showing through on the top, and that's why I did it that way. 
Okay, so the next step is we need to add our mandala. And we're going to, again, use the Barely Art glue because it's got that fine tip on the end of it. And that's allowing me to get a little bit of glue on almost all the areas of this mandala. I do go for kind of the center ports where things meet, where there's a little bit bigger of a spot. You want to put as much glue as possible onto the back of this and you want to hurry because you don't want it to dry. The reason for as much glue as possible is you're going to a non-flat surface. Again, we used a 3D embossing folder for the card front. So the surface is going to be extremely uneven, but we want this to lay down flat. And so you're going to move right along and add as much glue as possible. And I haven't sped this up. This is real time. I'm slow. <laughs> but you want to make sure that you get it on there because you don't want to have some of this peeling back when, you know, when the recipient takes it out of the envelope or has it on display. And the very, very top and the bottom uh, exceed the uh, width or the length of the card. So you'll be snipping them off at the end anyway. And as you can see, I like to use tweezers for this. That way I don't get my fingers all inky. I'm going to lay this down and you'll see that I have two acrylic candles sitting over there to the right. Once I get this laid down, I'm going to place both of those acrylic handles on top of my card and let it sit and dry to ensure that it's nicely stuck and clean my fingers. Okay, our next step is deciding where we are going to put our butterflies. I've already trimmed the mandala. I have some half squares of these foam squares. I see I cut it in half and added the pieces to the back of the butterfly and I am putting the top one or the bottom one down first and then I'm going to very lightly add the top one just in case I have to move it. Um, I'm trying not to let that wing stick out too far otherwise this card's not going to fit in an envelope and I don't want to cut the wings off. So I'm kind of just fooling around auditioning where I want all of this to go and I think that one's going to stick out there again with the wing hanging out the edge. I think I'm going to have to make a little bit bigger envelope for this one. <laughs> Thank God for envelope makers. Okay, so again, I'm repositioning that one at the top, moving it in a little bit. And then I still have my sentiment that I'm going to play with. So I'm kind of thinking about that at the same time. I've decided to cut my sentiment in half. And then that way it's going to fit on that little black spot at the top. I'm going to tuck that just underneath the wing of the butterfly and then the birthday should fit just in there too. Yep, it does. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the glue instead of the foam squares because of the lumpy surface on the face of the card. Um, I have a better chance of things staying where I want them to with the glue. Plus, I also have time to maneuver it around for about five or six seconds if I don't get it on there quite straight. And I don't know if you've ever tried to peel something off from an embossed surface. It usually takes the top layer of paper with it because it's been broken down going through the embossing folder. So uh, better safe than sorry, as they say. Okay, so I have my two sentiments kind of where I like them. And I'm just kind of holding them for a couple of secs uh, just until they dry. Okay, it's time to add some embellishments and I'm going to play with these beautiful dark purpley blue uh, gems from Spellbinders. Again, I will link everything that I'm using uh, underneath the video. There's also a link over to my blog where you can get the detailed cutting instructions um, as well as a breakdown of what I did for the card. And there's clickable links there for all the products I used today as well. Okay, and when I'm finished with Jim sticking to my fingers, <laughs> we will finish embellishing this card. And I did a no-no. Oh, no, I didn't. I oh, oh, yeah, I did. I use six gems. Normally, I use an odd number. But there's so much going on with these butterflies, I figured I'd put a little bit in between each one. Now, the final bling. Go dig in your box from way back when and grab some icicle stickles. I know you've got some in a drawer somewhere. And I'm going to fill in all of the little holes down the edge of the wings of each of the butterflies with stickles just for some added bling. 
and you want to do this after you have your butterflies nailed down to your card surface. Otherwise, you know that you're going to be impatient because you want to put your card together and you're going to stick your finger in the stickles and you're going to smear it all over the place. It happens every time. So my secret, do it last and then you can set the card aside to dry and move on to something else. Okay, we're getting there. I love all the added bling. I think it really brings the card to life, along with the pretty purple and pink. I think I need to try this in my greens and blues, my favorite colors. Okay, we're just about done. One last wing. And that'll be it. And here we go. Here's the finished cards. So the first one is the one I didn't make and it uses all the elements, but I stuck a piece of vellum underneath the butterfly uh, just to really make it pop a little bit. And you obviously don't need vellum on the other one. There's just so many pretty things going on with that card. I love the triple butterflies. Okay, everything I used today, as I said, is linked underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog and here I've added a couple more videos that I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, toodles!